Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from the Old Bird Farm and today we're going to start bringing peach farming back here to Waverly Hall, Georgia. I've got about eight peach trees to go in the ground here to join the three established peach trees I have. Let me show them to you. All right, so I got two varieties of peach trees here. Let's see what this one is. This one is the La Festival. La Festival peach. It requires 450 chilling hours, freestone, large fruit with yellow flesh flecked with red. Trees are vigorous and productive. One of LSU's releases ripens third week in June. So I'm not exactly sure what kind of uh, peach trees I already have. Now the two that are down there established, those two have the tags on them so we can find out. But I do believe that they are both early producers I know my original peach tree, which I'll show you on this video, was an early producer because when we had that really late freeze last year in March, it killed all of the uh, little baby peaches that were on it. So these are a little bit later producers. They also don't require as many chilling hours, um, which means the amount of time that the peach tree has to be in cold weather to produce fruit. Uh, a lot of peach trees require a lot of uh, cold hours, like uh, 800 cold hours. And our winters here in Georgia just have not been that cold recently. It's actually affected uh, some peach production in the state because we've had warm winters. Uh, and so the peach trees haven't produced like they're supposed to. So since we've had, again, warm winters here at the farm, I went with uh, trees that required less chilling time as it's called on the label. I think that one is 450 hours. Let's see what this one is. This one is a Bell of Georgia peach. I actually, I got more than two varieties. This Bell of Georgia peach, I don't know anything about it. Uh, it comes from a different nursery than the other tree does. Uh, I bought them at the same, you know, garden place, but it comes from a different nursery. It says lovely pink spring blossoms are followed later in the summer by delectable fruits with a red blush and clean white flesh. Freestone variety, excellent for fresh eating. So that's a different variety. Uh, I tried to get multiples of the same variety though. But yeah, this is another La Festival. So we got two of those, two La Festival trees. And this is our other Bell of Georgia. We've got two Bells of Georgia. And let's see, we've got a Sam Houston peach. This was the other one. I was thinking I just, I forgot I got the uh, uh, Bell of Georgia. I was thinking I just got the Sam Houston and the La Festival. The Sam Houston peach says it requires only 500 chilling hours. This variety is a yellow freestone with high quality firm flesh ripens in Mid-June, a heavy bearing self-pollinator. And this La Festival is uh, self-pollinating as well. I don't know about the Bell of Georgia because there's very little information on the tag and I didn't Google it. This is another La Festival. All right, we gotta go up in the bed for these two. What do we got here? another La Festival peach. So that's four of those. And this should be another Sam Houston here. Yeah, this is another Sam Houston peach. So we've got two Sam Houston peaches, four of the Festival peaches, and two Bell of Georgia peaches. So I want to give a big shout out to a few people, starting with Shelly and Gail, who left Super Chats on my last video. On the last video, uh, I said that I wanted to put more peach trees out here on the farm, and I said I needed to save some money so I could buy some more, because now is the time to plant uh, these peach trees. So uh, Gail and Shelly both left Super Chats uh, in, the, in the comments there, the Super Thanks, um, and said, you know, for peach trees, to go towards peach trees. So. Thank both of y'all for that. And also big shout out to Sandra who sent me a donation for more peach trees that covered the rest of these. 
So I really appreciate that. You know, it absolutely, I can't tell you how much it means to me to have people that, you know, truly believe in what we're doing here, in the goal that I have for this place, um, bringing back the, the house, bringing the farming aspect back, the peach trees here. Uh, I, it just, it blows me away to have people actually, you know, support that. And it really means a lot. So a really big heartfelt thank you to y'all. It really means a lot. I cannot express that enough. So now let's, uh, let's go dig some holes. All right, so if you watched the last video, I had already started cleaning up this garden area. We plowed it again and actually planted some more stuff for some of this colder weather crop. Uh, so the, this side still has, needs to be cleaned up and I still have it, uh, but this is where we're gonna put the new peach trees. See, I've got the two down here and I wanna carry this row on out. Uh, I do in the future, want to put more peach trees in. Um, I want to put a small orchard here at the farm. And so we've got another row. We'll step them over there and do that. This is a great full sun area. I do have one tree that needs to be removed over here and another one, but a professional tree service is going to have to do that because it's kind of over the power line. Uh, so I'm going to come through here real quick and just kind of clean this area up, get the weeds out of the way, uh, and then we'll start spacing out and putting our trees in the ground. All right, so the first peach that I'm gonna put in the ground here is this Sam Houston peach. This uh, tree was developed, by the way, by Texas A&M. Um, it's the uh, 500 chilling hours tree. Um, so we're gonna put this one in first and the spacing is about 15 to 20 feet for this. So I'm just gonna kind of walk off 15 to 20 feet from this tree down here. By the way, these original peach trees down here or the second, set of peach trees that I planted. This is a Red Haven peach. This is a high chill variety, uh, which I reckon means it needs a lot. Yeah, it requires 800 to 950 chilling hours. And I don't think that we've gotten that this year in Georgia or in this area, at least. We haven't really had that many cold. We've had, don't get me wrong. We've had unpleasant days but I don't think we've had cold enough for, uh, for these trees, at least days in a row, because we'll have a 14 degree day, three days later, it'll be 70 degrees. Weather in Georgia is crazy. Now this other peach that's all the way down here at the end, where I'm at, and I'm standing with it right now, this is a Sam Houston peach. So evidently I already had one of those out here before. So we'll have a mate to it. And I just saw the worst thing that I do believe I've ever seen. Here's a dang wisteria vine done worked its way up my Sam Houston, my other Sam Houston peach there. All right, so we're going to count out just uh, 15 to 20 feet. So that's uh, one, two, three. I was dead on where I set it down, wasn't I? Yeah, we'll put it right here. So time to get the old shovel out, dig a hole and uh, plant a peach tree. And then another one, and another one, and another one. We gotta do this about eight times. getting warm out here. I wore the wrong shirt to be out here digging today. Let's see, we got three trees in the ground. Let's see, this is our, what is this? This is the first La Festival peach that's gone in the ground there. The other two are Sam Houston peaches. 
So I think this row is actually pretty much done. Let me step back and show you why. This is the gate right there. So the gate's got to swing open and the little drive in right beside our weed burning barrel. So that's going to be it for this row of peaches. So we're going to go ahead and have to figure out where we can put some more. But let's have a look at what we've done. Got that one. Got this one. And I think we've kept them pretty much in, in a row. You know, that one over there is stepped out a little bit. But for the most part, they're in the row like I wanted them. Oh. Hold on a second before we go all the way down there. I need to do something. Let's see. There, there we go. I see what I need. Ugh. If I can pick them up. Here we go. Let's go down there. Y'all come on down here with me. So these are the hibiscus that we planted uh, last year and produced so many hibiscus uh, fruit, flowers. I guess it's flowers. And uh, they, they're all dead now, of course, but... I definitely want to put some more of those in the ground this year because the amount of hibiscus that this produced is unbelievable and amazing. Look at that. Wisteria vine somehow got by me and crawled up my peach tree here. I don't know how I missed that. Look at that. I'm going to jerk. So, fun fact. The nursery where I bought these, uh, these peach trees from. They were selling wisteria there. And I looked at it and I said to the guy who was helping me out there, I said, man, I can't believe y'all have that shit there. And he was like, yeah, it's, inv it's super invasive. And I was like, yeah, I know. And told him, you know, what I'm dealing with over here. And uh, he said that a couple people had just come in to buy some wisteria. And they'd bought a couple trees to go along with it. Making sure that's all the, all the vines out of this tree. Anyway, they'd bought a couple trees to go along with the wisteria. And he told me that they said that they wanted the wisteria to, to climb those trees. And I was like, yo, well, it's definitely going to do that. I had a little bit of concern on this peach tree right here. Let's, let's let y'all look at it and tell me what's going on here. See that's kind of a, a weird knot right there and I see some sap dried on the side of the tree here. That to me, I don't know what that damage is from right there but it concerns me. It looks like, you know, maybe a borer or something went inside of the tree right there. Let's see if there's any more spots like that. There's another spot there. I don't know, that, that might not be what that is though. That may be something else going on with this tree. If any of you guys are peach tree experts, let me know down in the comments because that is concerning. You can also see a mark already where this wisteria was growing on this tree. Thankfully it's small and It'll recover. But what bad stuff this wisteria really is. You know, as much as I keep an eye on it and clear this property and kept an eye on this garden last year, I missed this piece of wisteria that grew up one of my prized peaches here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just a fella don't know what to think. There we go, we got it out. Terrible stuff right there. I'm gonna take it to the weed burning barrel where we're gonna send it to Wisteria Hell one of these days here soon. Anyway, crazy, crazy that they sell Wisteria. You know, I mean, it's a, I guess you can plant whatever you like. We have the freedom to do that, but there's just some things that you shouldn't. All right, we got five peach trees. That's awesome. All right, so we got three peach trees in the ground right here. So we still got some to go. As a matter of fact, we got five to go. So we'll move our watering bucket out of the way here. 
and let's count out 15 feet this way. Now I'm not convinced that I actually am gonna be able to plant these this far in because peach trees require full sun and also sandy soil. We got the good sandy soil here at the farm. We got some of the best soil in all of Harris County here. So I'd have to do another row right here to be proper with the spacing. Of course, you know, I'm just counting it with my feet and that's not particularly accurate. I'm trying to figure out exactly where we might want to put this. We could also go that way too. I've got enough space to put another. Now I've got those longleaf pines there and we can't shade those out. So I don't know how full sun it's definitely going to get full morning sun because the sun rises that way then comes over the property. So it'll definitely be full morning sun here. Yeah, this should be good. It's not quite, it may, maybe that's 15 feet right here. It might be, it looks about like it. Actually, I'm lying. It looks like 12 feet, but that should be good. You know, I've been in a lot of peach orchards around here and the peach trees were growing a whole lot closer together than I just planted all these. And it recommends that they are planted. But you know what we could do? We could actually step off and do the peach trees in the middle of these two peach trees. And that would kind of give it, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll do a peach tree in the middle of every one of these uh, as far down as we can before we start to lose the good light. So I'm going to mark my spot right there and uh, I'm going to go grab a, uh, another peach tree. Okay, so I like this area for planting these peach trees here. Now, one thing that I don't know how to do, and maybe one of y'all can uh, leave me a link down in the comments on how to prune these peach trees because I, I don't know uh, as much as I want to be a peach farmer at least on a small scale uh, I don't know how to prune peach trees uh, so I definitely need to do some research on that read up on that because I see that in a lot of the uh, peach orchards that are around here the peaches are I actually look quite tormented with the way that they're cut uh, but they obviously do some heavy pruning that aids in uh, fruit production and also is probably why they work when they're so crowded together at those orchards. Now, all of my peach trees thus far have grown pretty wild, so I'm sure that they need some direction on how to actually grow. All right, so let's start digging here. For Where did I just pick that up from? I think it was right there. All right, should be super easy ground to dig right here since it's been plowed. So, you know, I don't know much about growing peach trees. I've had really good luck with the peaches that I've planted out here on the farm. The trees, I should say, the trees have grown very well and have done beautifully for me. But they haven't produced any fruit yet. Of course, these two trees over here were just planted last year, so, you know, you wouldn't expect them to produce that quick. But my other one, has had the opportunity to produce and it hasn't. And I say that it has had the opportunity to produce because it's fully flowered and has had a lot of little baby peaches on it the past couple years, but it's never grown peaches on it. The peaches have never matured. I've never been able to eat a peach off of that and I think that the last year it was because of the late freeze that we had in March killed I it was full of peaches oh I'm telling you it was full of peaches I had peaches for days on that tree the late freeze killed 90% of them it left me with three little baby peaches and I still didn't get to eat one of those because those three little baby peaches also died and I think that they died because of a parasite I think I showed it on video what it looked like but the little baby peach had uh, clear gunky liquid coming out of it and that was from what I later learned is that was from a little uh, 
worm of some sort that I guess the egg for that worm gets laid in the peach blossom. So then when the fruit forms, the worm is already inside of the peach. So by the time that the little baby peach is growing, is formed there, if it, and it has one of those worms on it, or in it, I should say, it's too late. Some kind of larva for some, you know, flying insect. So you have to spray those peach trees while they are blooming. Because if you wait until the little baby peach is formed, it's too late. And the, the thing has already been laid inside of the flower. So that's definitely something that I learned about last year, tragically. You know, I lost the three peaches that survived the freeze, lost those. So I learned about that last year. And I want to be, you know, I want to grow peaches. I want to be able to eat peaches that were grown on this property, take care of them the right way, and, you know, be a, a small-time peach farmer for multiple reasons. One reason is in Tobit County, just 20 minutes away, there used to be tons of peach orchards around here. Peaches were a big business over in Tobit County. Now they're almost non-existent. I don't know of any orchards that even exist in this area except for some over in Merriweather County. But as far as Harris and Talbot counties, I don't know of any peach orchards that still exist, but they were historically here and historically a lot of peaches were, were grown here. Nowadays when you think of peach production in Georgia, you think of either South Georgia or out near Macon, Georgia where the peaches are grown. But they used to be grown here and that's kind of something that I want to bring back at least in my little 11 acre farm is uh, the the production of peaches so i've also discovered that even though you know i know nothing about peaches growing peaches doesn't mean that i can't do it anything that you put your mind to you can do something that i've learned i've done many things that i've wanted to do i've learned how to do it and i've done it from clearing this land to restoring this house. When I first started this project of rebuilding this house, I had many people tell me that I could not do it. As, you know, I, I saw many comments, especially in the early days, saying, you can't do that. You don't know what you're doing. And you know, I never said that I did know what I was doing. In the beginning of these videos, the question was, can I save this? Because I don't know this, but I learned how to do it. I had friends that knew how to do this stuff. I incorporated help from the outside and, and learning, and I was able to make great strides of saving this house as we continue to go in and, and replace flooring and continue to bring this house back and the land too. So, you know, anything that you want to do, you just put your mind to it and you can do it even if it's peach farming. So I got lots of research to do on this. And we got four more peach trees to put in the ground. I can feel the comment coming in now, too much talking. Let's get some more trees in the ground. All right, so I got another row completed here. I only put three of these uh, peach trees over on this side, and I just got distracted by the three little bluebird family that just landed in the trees over there. You guys probably can't see it on camera, but they're just above that fence over there in the trees. There's one of them, went and flew away. Lots and lots of bluebirds out here on the farm. Anyway, I uh, got this other last row done, only did three trees here and i'm going to leave it at three trees for now and the spacing is kind of funny compared to our more properly spaced row over here of course i use the kind of well look at the old mustang would you anyway i use a kind of angled thing to put them between these two trees but this one i, I moved over a little bit more than i wanted to namely because i didn't want to put anything under the power line just in case you know that ever has to come down or be worked on or something like that Although that one's pretty close to being under it. And then, of course, the last two over here. So, got a bunch of peach trees over here. 
and we've got two to go. So I think this will look great. And we still have room in here to put, you know, some vegetables or stuff between the trees too, if we so desire. And these are all the La Festival trees planted here. So we've got two peach trees to go, and they are the peach trees that are called the Bell of Georgia. And I think that with a name like that, Bell of Georgia Peach, those are peach trees that need to go front and center for two reasons. One, because I don't want to separate them. I want to keep, you know, the like kind together. But also Bell of Georgia, with a name like that, it's got to be a pretty grand tree. So uh, let me look and show you where I'm thinking about putting these. I got to decide for myself too. And right here is our original peach tree too. I told you I wanted to show it to you on this video and I'm really proud of this tree and how it has grown. I mean, this tree is massive compared to when I planted it. Of course, you know, that's what it's supposed to do, right? It's supposed to grow, but it's gotten really big. And it's also, uh, you know, this tree is a true survivor. It got hit with the tractor pretty hard when it was young and I accidentally ran into it with the bush hog. I think that was back with the Ford. You can see the scar still right there. And then it looks like I may have had a deer or something come up and start rubbing on it right there at some time because that is new damage that just happened this year, but I did not do that. Uh, it also got broken another time. I don't remember exactly what happened, but it's gotten broken and damaged a few times, but has continued to grow and grow into quite a big tree. And this one could definitely be pruned. You see, it's got lots of little buds on it there. So this will be full of leaves and flowers and will be an absolutely beautiful tree soon. And I can't wait to see that. And I can't wait for y'all to see that as well. So really proud of this peach tree, you know? And I planted this tree at a time when I had absolutely no idea what I was doing when it came to uh, putting something in the ground. I didn't break up the root ball of this tree. Uh, I just dug a little hole, dropped it in there and we'll see what happens. And as you can see, it did fine. It has grown up uh, amazingly well. So we've got two trees to go and I'm thinking that they should go right up here, right beside the fence, where the peach blossoms can be seen blooming and they'll just be real show pieces. So I think I'm gonna put them between my daffodils here. I think I'm gonna put one Bell of Georgia peach there and then the other one on the other side of the sign. Call caught on camera right here. The dog's about to put that window out, ain't he? Okay, so we got interrupted out here, but as I was saying, which was just a second ago for you guys and like 30 minutes ago for me, I think I'm gonna put my peach trees right here so they can be, you know, just real showy. I'm gonna put one right here between my daffodils here. Speaking of which, daffodils are about to bloom, but these daffodils desperately need to be split. And I think that's why the flowers never bloom on these here, never open up all the way because they're just growing too close together. All right, so one tree there. Then we'll come past this and put another one right about there. And we'll have two beautiful showy peach trees in the front yard, so let's get it done. All right, so there we go. Two more peach trees here at the Old Bird Farm, which equals to eight total planted today. So originally I said I was gonna put this tree over on the other side of the, uh, the sign right there, and you'll see that I didn't. And the reason that I did not do that is because right down there where I was planning on putting it is a very low area. And that's gonna hold water in that area right there. And that wouldn't be no good for the old peach tree here. 
So we just put them right there. Probably a little bit too close together, but these are gonna kind of be our, you know, our display peach trees right here. Also, I'm sure somebody's already typed in the comment that I planted these too close to the fence. And that would be true if I wasn't gonna remove this fence and uh, redo it at some time. Not happy with this fence at all. Uh, so it's gonna get redone sometime soon. So, you know, the fence will be moved, the trees, Will be permanent so that's it folks that's the story of how we saved peach farming here at the old bird farm at least i've got to take some trash out to the road as you can see that right there and uh, i'm going to water in and mulch these trees the good thing is that uh, we've got rain coming in this weekend so you know ain't nothing like a uh, little bit of natural rain that'll make something just uh, be real happy when it's just been planted here. So I'm, I'm really proud of this. I am really proud of this, really excited to see these trees bloom this year. If anything, even if we don't get a single peach off of them this year, I just can't wait to see them bloom. But I really hope we get a peach. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Again, big shout out to everyone who makes this possible. And uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time out here on the Old Bird Farm. Old Bird Farm.